Welcome to the Matt Bernier Show. Today is Friday, February the 10th, 2017. This is the Matt Bernier Show on DRF TV, live.drf.com, livestream.com, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, video.drf.com, all sorts of different ways for you to find this show. Also, if you want to watch live, you have it on Twitter and Facebook as well. My name is Matt Bernier. You can follow along with me on Twitter, at Bernier underscore Matt. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, just whatever you want to throw out there, fire away at me on Twitter. It's derby season, obviously. We'll get to that in a moment. We had a quick little change, though, as far as the, the rundown is concerned, because earlier this morning, unfortunately, we found out that champion Royal Delta passed away while giving birth to her foal, who was by Galileo. The foal apparently is fine. Everything is all well and good there. Um, but it's, it's sad news. And again, this is just a quick little alteration from what the initial plan was. And also have to mention that this entire episode of this Matt Bernier show is brought to you by our friends at Tampa Bay Downs. And this show is going to be heavy as far as Tampa Bay Downs is concerned, a big day of racing Saturday afternoon down there. But again, we'll get to that in a couple moments. Just kind of had to touch on the whole Royal Delta situation. Again, it's a sad s scenario no matter what, whenever we find out any of these horses pass away or connections or anything like that. But particularly when you just look at a horse like Royal Delta, who I think over the, the past handful of years, you look and see all the big females that have ruled this sport, whether it's Zenyatta and Rachel, they kind of kicked things off. But you had Hav de Grace, you had Blind Luck, you had... Beholder, you've had Stellar Wind, you've had you name it. They, they've come through and run, run the show, Songbird. This Philly Royal Delta or mayor at this stage in the game, I fear she's going to get a little bit lost in the shuffle, but when you look at her overall body of work, and uh, you can follow Mike Hogan at DRF Formulator. He tweeted out her lifetime past performances. I have them right here with all sorts of colors if you're watching on the screen. Um, I mean, you go through, she had nine times where she earned a 100 buyer or greater. At a 22 lifetime start, she was 12 for 22 to begin with, with almost $5 million in career earnings. She was a six-time grade one winner. She was a two-time Breeders' Cup Ladies Classic slash Distaff winner, if you will. So the fact that she's got multiple Breeders' Cups, she has nine 100-plus buyers. She's a six-time grade one winner. She's a 10-time graded stakes winner, all told. She threw in a couple of clunkers over in Dubai, but that's okay. She didn't have to love that surface that was back when they were running on synthetic. She's one of those mares that I, I don't want to get, you know, have her get lost in the shuffle considering the overall body of work that she accumulated and, and, and accomplished over the course of her career. Uh, really one of the good ones over the past 10 years, I would say. So again, sad news this morning that she passed away. Complications during foaling, but the foal has survived by Galileo. We'll find out. Who knows? Hopefully that little baby can uh, carry on her legacy because this was the only one that she unfortunately was able to pass along. So unfortunate news, Royal Delta passing away this morning. Let's move on to something a little bit more uplifting anyway, this time of year. It's derby season, obviously. Uh, we have an updated top 10 as far as the Kentucky Derby point standings are concerned. And we're going to take a look at that graphic right now if we could. If things are a little bit topsy-turvy at this stage in the game, and this is particularly important because tomorrow afternoon the only derby points race is going to be run at Tampa Bay Downs, and that's the Sam F. Davis. But you see at the top it's still Classic Empire, but all of a sudden Classic Empire is not nearly as, let's say, stout as he looked about a week ago this time, simply because he laid a complete dud last weekend in the Holy Bull, and we'll dive into that in depth. But you see Al Arib, he's running second in there with 20 points, tied with Gormley. Gunnavera is fourth at 14. Practical Joke is fifth at 14, or tied for fourth, I should say. Uncontested with 11. Looking at Lee with 10. Irish War Cry with 10. Mastery with 10. Motown with 10. There actually happen to be a, a few other runners in there that also have 10 points. So they share, essentially, you have a tie between seven and 13. Got 10 points along with McCracken, Guest Suite, and Royal Mo. We're going to see uh, McCracken tomorrow afternoon in the Sam F. Davis. But let's take a look at the three horses anyway that we saw last weekend. We're going to first take a look at the horse card for Irish Warcry, who was your winner of the Holy Bull last Saturday down at Gulfstream Park. And the reason we're not going to take a look at the videos is because we're going to look at that when we come up and look at the handicapping review that we did. This is a horse, obviously, well-connected. Joel Rosario is the rider. He's not the owner. Graham Motion is the trainer. You know, a scenario where Motion obviously knows what he's doing. He's won the Kentucky Derby in the past. This is a lightly raced horse that who knows what the, the ceiling really is at this stage in the game. He got away with a rather easy lead on the front end, but he made them pay, and it was his first time going two turns. All of a sudden, Irish War Cry stamps himself as a name that we're going to have to pay attention to going forward. As far as the Derby is concerned, he has 10 points going towards the first Saturday in May. 
up here in New York last Saturday. We had L. I. Reeb go out there and strut his stuff. This is the Withers, Travis Stone from the top of the lane. Hey boys, that goes under the whip farther back. Apart from the crowd has lost ground toward the rail. Top of the stretch. Here comes Ella Reeb coming after True Timber and taking charge and taking off by the eighth pull. Ella Reeb opens up by two. True Timber fights on second. J Boys Echo on the outside is into third. Apart from the crowd is fourth. Down to the final sixteenth. And another impressive performance by El Arib under the wire to win the Withers by four in the end. I'm starting to become a believer in this horse, and I understand you look at the pedigree, maybe it doesn't scream distance is going to be his friend, but boy, at the end of the day, all he does is go out and run 90-plus buyer speed figures. He's accomplished it going two turns. He's proven now that he can relax off the pace. Trevor McCarthy did everything perfect there. Katha Lynch has even come out and said that they didn't think that this horse enjoyed the wet track that he romped on two starts back. I believe that was in the Jerome when he won by eight, nine lengths, so... All of a sudden, you've got to look at this horse and say 20 points. I said a couple weeks ago when we talked about derby sort of qualifications and parameters that 20 points in the past has, has kind of proven to be the threshold. He's at 20 right now. Maybe that puts him in. Maybe that puts him on the border. Well, guess what? He at least has the luxury of having it be February, and he's in that position as opposed to some of the other horses that need points. The last race we'll take a look at, one of the preps from last weekend anyway. It was out at Santa Anita. It was the Robert B. Lewis. It may not have been the most sort of appetizing field on paper going into it, a short field, but from the top of the stretch, Royal Mo and Michael Rona. Sheer flattery, two and a half lengths off. Dangerfield weakening. Less than 3.16 to go. Royal Mo has bounded away from IRAP leads by a two lengths. Coming past the eighth pole with Sheer flattery only plodding away in third. Royal Mo shows the way home. Royal Mo, too good. He's won it by three from IRAP and Sheer flattery and then term of art. I don't have any real knocks. Uh, he, he was out there on a, a relatively easy lead, and I understand he, he put away IRAP when he came at him, but at the end of the day, the, well, I don't think we're looking at any superstars. Figure-wise, it came back very, very nice for a horse that's lightly raced in Royal Mo with a 93 buyer. I, again, who knows? Maybe he turns into something. Maybe he blossoms in a big way. He's going to need to prove a little bit more, but at the end of the day, the big important piece about all three of those runners that we just took a look at, Irish Warcry, El Arib, Royal Mo, they all have at least 10 points. The latter two, or I shouldn't say the latter two, El Arib actually has 20, Irish Warcry has 10, Royal Mo has 10. Now all of a sudden you're looking at it saying, let's really truly work backwards from the first Saturday in May, not we need to go and get this done before we can even consider the Derby. These horses are all in very advantageous positions. And again, there's only one race tomorrow afternoon, or this weekend as a whole, that awards points for the Kentucky Derby. That is going to be at Tampa Bay Downs, our presenting sponsor this weekend in the Sam F. Davis. We're going to take a break here on the Matt Bernier Show. When we come back, we're going to go back and look and see how we did. Three races last weekend, one from Gulfstream Park, two from Santa Anita. It's the Handicapping Review. Stay with us, the Matt Bernier Show. You asked, we listened. DRF Plus has more flexible subscription options. Use DRF Plus Basic for exclusive news and analysis, including our DRF Live real-time news feed. Or go deeper with DRF Pro and unlock buyers, closer looks, picks, and reports, including the DRF Daily Game Plan. DRF TV viewers get 50% off the plan of your choice. Use code DRFTV50 at checkout. Learn more about the DRF Plus subscription plans at drf.com forward slash plus. Say goodbye to your inner caveman. If you're making caveman bets on pick sixes, you could be leaving money on the table. DRF Bets Ticketmaker helps you build more profitable exotic bets and place them with one click. Raise your game with DRF Bets Ticketmaker. Be a samurai with your ROI. 
DRF Bets Ticket Maker helps you cut out unprofitable exotic bets before they happen and be the master of profits. Raise your game with DRF Bets Ticket Maker, the exotic wagering app. 1209 on the East, 909 on the West, the Matt Bernier Show on DRF TV, live.drf.com, livestream.com. You've got Twitter, you've got Facebook if you want to follow along live with us, if you want to listen to this thing podcast, whether it's just audio or visual as well. You've got YouTube, you've got SoundCloud, you've got iTunes, you've got video.drf.com. As we do every Friday, we go through some races, and then the following week we reflect. For better or for worse, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's terrible. No tears here. We go on and we just call it like it is. Let's start off. We had the Holy Bowl last weekend. It was a scenario. We're going into it. Everybody and their brother. Again, sometimes I'm not going to give you anything that's really earth-shattering. Classic Empire was far and away the most likely winner of that race. I wouldn't have touched him with a 10-foot pole at 1-2, to two, ultimately what he went off at. I thought a live long shot going into it, and you, you never truly know. And I kind of felt like, again, it's, it's gray area. A live long shot, I kind of figured he would take some money. But I thought Irish Roar Cry was an interesting runner. The reason we didn't watch the video at the top of the show, is going to watch it now. Pete Aiello. Canavera to his outside, and they turn for home in the Holy Bull. An Irish war cry set down for the drive by Joel Rosario and maintains a two-length lead. And he's strong up front. Canavera can only watch and wonder from second, then Classic Empire third. Well back to the others, but the Holy Bull to Irish war cry. Gate to wire. I liked everything I saw there. I, I understand maybe, you know, he got away with it on the front end. It wasn't really, he wasn't taking any kind of heat. But, and he was a little bit late to change leads, but I think the important thing to remember about this horse, he started three times. It was his first start with Lasix. He had earned a couple of good figs prior to that. He comes into this spot, gets a nice buyer, and his first two-turn start for Grand Motion. I think he's a little bit green. I think there's plenty of room for improvement at this stage in the game. Sounds like Motion is content keeping him there, pl planning on a race like the Fountain of Youth, planning on the Florida Derby. Let's not get cute with this thing, I believe, is what the quote was. They know what they've got. They've got a very, very talented animal in this stage in the game. The big story was obviously Classic Empire laying a complete egg. Now, you heard all sorts of rumblings leading up to the Holy Bull that maybe he was reluctant to train, maybe the ship over wasn't very good, he was a sweaty mess before they even got into the gate, and at no point did he really look all that comfortable. I thought Julian Leperu gave him a very, very good ride. I don't think that can be used in his excuse whatsoever. He had every opportunity if he was good enough, he just didn't pick his feet up. I think Sneaky the one that's going to get lost in a race like this simply because Irish War Cry did what he did and now he stamped himself as a, as a derby contender and Classic Empire was the bee's knees coming into it and now maybe there's some questions about him. Gunnavera didn't have the easiest of trips and the fact that he was as close as he was at the end of the race I think is heartening. A horse that I've never been a huge, huge fan of, I'm starting to warm up to him a little bit as well. He's always going to be up against it with that running style trying to come from way out of it. But you have to figure in a race like the Derby. I know we've had more moderate paces in recent years, but a mile and a quarter I don't think is going to be a problem for him. He's at 14 points as far as the Derby qualifying system is concerned. Certainly needs to do a little bit more, but he's on the fringe at this stage. And by dialed in, you've got to assume the mile and a quarter is going to be his friend. Gunnavera, I thought, ran sneaky well in there coming out of that race. Maybe we'll see him in the Fountain Youth. Maybe we'll wait and see him in the Florida Derby. Let's move on to the San Antonio. My son, Opportunity, I thought he was a vulnerable favorite. Little did I know more spirit would take the, the ridiculous amount of money that he was going to take. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have picked him. Uh, I thought a live long shot in there was El Huerfano. Let's take a look to San Antonio turning for home. Michael Rona for home and it's a one length lead for El Huerfano of a more spirit who's starting to come at him now two and a half lengths opportunity ranging into contention with a big run down the outside accelerate tries to come with opportunity 16th to go more spirit El Huerfano joined by opportunity then accelerate opportunity just in front of more spirit opportunity back to back in the San Antonio beat more spirit third either accelerate or El Huerfano I thought this was a tremendous performance. Maybe I'm overstating it a little bit. We talked about it in the weekend wrap with Dan Ilman. I, I kind of just feel like the way Santanita works going two turns on the main track, a horse like Opportunity for his entire career has basically been up against it. And the fact that he's accomplished what he has, he's earned $4 million, the quietest $4 million you'll ever see in horse racing. He shows up and runs his race. He's going to get a low 100 more often than not. He threw a rare clunker in the Clark, and maybe I was a little bit uh, overreactive to throwing him out. But I just thought the way the race set up on paper, at a mile and a 16th, shorter than he really wants, maybe he was going to be up against it. He ultimately went off as the second choice of 5-2, to two, and I think a, a case can be made that that was value. I made him 7-2, to two, so it was a little bit light for my liking. 
Uh, I'm pleased with the way the live long shot ran. El Huerfano, he was he's sort of the 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 epitome of a horse that is aided by that track profile at Santa Anita. He has no business stepping with those kind of horses. But the fact that he had speed, Victor rode him beautifully. Lay down some legitimate fractions, go out there, try to take over this thing. Not take it over, but try to blow it open, and turn it for home. Unfortunately, he had more spirit sitting just off of him. More spirit is a horse that I think needs something. He seems a little uh, lackadaisical, let's say. He doesn't seem like he wants to go and get the job done. Then I was a little bit too harsh immediately following the race. In hindsight, you know, cooler heads prevail. I went back and looked, and, and again, I thought he ran better than maybe I was giving him credit for immediately afterward. But he's certainly going to need to move forward, I think, if he's going to be considered a big boy in that division. Doesn't mean he can't win a race like the Santa Anita Handicap coming up next month. But at the end of the day, I was a little bit disappointed with him. I thought a huge effort from Hopportunity, who I thought was a vulnerable favorite. Last race we looked at was the San Marcos. It wrapped things up out at Santa Anita last weekend. I thought, or last Saturday, I should say. I thought a live long shot was high happy. I didn't think he would take the drastic amount of money that he did, but I also didn't think that we would have the numerous amount of scratches that we did. Uh, this one, I never would have had this Michael Rona turning for home. Followed by Texas Rayano in the orange blinkers. 2020 vision being brought to the outside. The race on in earnest in upper stretch. A red tie, Dave, being joined again by it's in the post. Isotherm for Pratt joins in. Not much room at the fence for Perfectly Majestic. High, happy, flamboyant next. Isotherm takes the lead and Flavion Pratt has swept the late pick four. Isotherm and the San Marcos. I, ha I have to, you know, again, it's one of those things. You can, you can gloat when you're right and you can admit when you're wrong and you've got to admit when you're wrong. Isotherm, I never liked him. I never thought in a million years he would take the amount. I shouldn't say that. I thought he would take the money that he did simply because he takes money in every race. But credit to George Weaver. Credit to Matthew Shera, the owner. They persisted. They went on with this horse. They kind of felt like firm ground and more distance was going to be his friend. If you watch the gallop out, you can pull that up in DRF Formulator. Galloped out like an absolute monster. Maybe this is all he's wanted all along. I was way wrong about him. High Happy was beaten with a half mile to go. And the fact that he stuck around to run fourth, that, that makes me a little bit concerned about the quality of that field. But, I mean, it just seems like it's the same old song and dance in Southern California with the turf horses. Any reasonable horse from the East Coast goes out west and turns into a monster. Um, it'll be interesting to see if anybody else ships out there, but Isotherm gets the job done for George Weaver. Hi, Happy. I thought he was a live long shot. He went off at 5-1. to one. Don't love that price. Now, obviously, I wouldn't have called him a live long shot had I known he'd go off at 5-1. to one. He was really a well-beaten fourth in that spot. Hopefully, we can do a little bit better coming up this Saturday afternoon. And the beautiful thing is when we come back from commercial, our presenting sponsor, Tampa Bay Downs, they've got a giant, giant day of racing Saturday afternoon. We're going to go over all three of the graded stakes races. Bringing you right into the Late Pick 4 video, which we'll do later on this afternoon. Myself and Dan Illman. Again, Tampa Bay Downs presenting sponsor for the Matt Bernier Show. Stay with us when we come back. Three graded stakes. You asked, we listened. DRF Plus has more flexible subscription options. Use DRF Plus Basic for exclusive news and analysis, including our DRF Live real-time news feed. Or go deeper with DRF Pro and unlock buyers, closer looks, picks, and reports, including the DRF Daily Game Plan. DRF TV viewers get 50% off the plan of your choice. Use code DRFTV50 at checkout. Learn more about the DRF Plus subscription plans at drf.com forward slash plus. goodbye to your inner caveman. If you're making caveman bets on pick sixes, you could be leaving money on the table. DRF Bets Ticket Maker helps you build more profitable exotic bets and place them with one click. Raise your game with DRF Bets Ticket Maker. Be a samurai with your ROI. 
DRF Bets Ticket Maker helps you cut out unprofitable exotic bets before they happen and be the master of profits. Raise your game with DRF Bets Ticket Maker, the exotic wagering app. 1219 on the East, 919 on the West. It's the Matt Bernier Show on DRF TV, live.drf.com, and live stream Twitter, Facebook if you want to watch it live, obviously, as well. Let's dive into it. Our presenting sponsor this week, our friends at Tampa Bay Downs, giant, giant day of racing Saturday afternoon. We'll have all of it for you on DRF Live starting at 3 o'clock Eastern. We'll show you that in a little bit, though. Let's dive into the races, though. The three graded stakes that are going to be featured on the card, starting with the Tampa Bay. Let's take a look at that field if we could. If you're new to this show and you're watching it with some visual aids, you'll see right now this is the entry card. And on the far right side of the screen, you have odds. It's not the morning line. Those are my odds, but I think fair value on each one of these runners would be. Right in order, post position-wise, Inspector Lindley, 6-1. to one. It's not easy being breezy. I love him, but 99-1. to one. I think he's in over his head. Casa Key, 5-1. to one. Turbo Street, 10-1. to one. Irish Street, 24-1. to one. Catapult, 5-1. to one. Kaigen, 13-1. to one. Bondurant, 12-1 to one as we turn the page. Kokomon, 10-1. to one. Conquest Panthera, 6-1. to one. I think this is a really interesting race for a number of reasons. You have horses that are reputation horses, such as Inspector Lindley, who have ability, but at the end of the day, they either find some trouble or they come with their late kick, and it's just not quite enough. He had some trouble in his most recent start as well. Don't think we want to go that direction. That's why I think he has a chance in there, but 6-1, to that's about as, as much as I would take on him. Anything lower, I think, is an underlay. I think a vulnerable favorite, and I don't mean because I don't think he's got a shot in here, is Kasaki. We're going to take a look at the Arlington Million back from August of August 13th, I should say. You're going to see the big gray. He's going to dive down to the inside. He gets a really good ride. He's in a little bit tight, but I thought Robbie Alvarado did everything in his power to get this horse home. Sure, maybe it was a little bit tight, but I don't think that's the excuse. Mondi Elise is on the outside in full flight. Kasaki is a horse that I've been a fan of ever since he got here. I liked him a little bit in the Turf Classic. He fell down. He came right back. I liked him a lot in the Wise Dan. He got nipped at the wire. It killed me at 10 to 1. I think he's one of the more underrated horses that we have as far as his overall production. He shows up and runs his race. He's very similar to a horse like Hopportunity where maybe they don't get the credit that they deserve. I think in many ways he's the horse that you could argue is the most likely winner. I'm not going to call him that simply because off the layoff, the numbers for Nacho Correa is not so good. I believe 0 for 29 off of this kind of layoff. But I, I'm not going to be surprised at all if he wins. I think he is a deserving favorite, but I do think he's a vulnerable favorite. A live long shot on my pick in the race, if you have taken a look at our uh, preview that we have on video.drf.com, video you know that I like Conquest Panther. We're going to take a look at his most recent start. This was at Gulfstream Park, January the 15th. Oh, we don't have the replay. That's all right. You're going to be able to see it tomorrow afternoon. That's going to be on live.drf.com at 3 o'clock Eastern. Conquest Panthera is an interesting horse simply because he started five times and he's five years old. He has two year-plus layoffs on his page. He's certainly not the, the most sound of animals, unfortunately. Uh, but I think there is some ability here. I thought he got a great ride from Jose Lascano most recently. Dove down to the inside. When he kicked through, I thought he kind of pulled himself up. And when all included for Todd Pletcher on the far outside came and he saw him, he re-engaged and he finished well. I think this is an interesting horse. I made him 6-1. to one. He's my live long shot. I believe he's 12 on the morning line. He's also my pick in the Grade 3 Tampa Bay. Let's move on to what many people would consider the highlight of the racing day at Tampa Bay tomorrow afternoon. That's the Sam F. Davis. The winner will get 10 Kentucky Derby qualifying points. Let's take a look at this field if we could. You've got a field of nine signed on in here. Right in order, State of Honor and King and his court, 1-2, and two, both of them. Mark Cassie, 9-1, 24-1, respectively, in my opinion. Fact-finding from Todd Pletcher, 9-1. to one. Chance of luck, I like the horse. Six-gun salute, another local horse, 99-1. to one. I don't think they can win in here. Wild shot for Rusty Arnold, the horse that I really, really like, 5-1. to one. Taprit for Todd Pletcher, 9-1. to one. McCracken, 7-2. to two. And no dozing, 3-1. to one. I'm sure a lot of people are hearing this saying, how could you not have McCracken as the most likely winner? I really like what I've seen out of no dozing thus far. Maybe he turns into the wise guy of all wise guy horses. I thought his run two back. I know he didn't get to Classic Empire, and I know Wild Shot finished ahead of him. His run up here at Aqueduct, I believe in the Remsen, I thought was fantastic. Now, when you consider that Motown, who a lot of people think is one of the more highly sort of touted or regarded three-year-olds this stage in the game, when you consider he had the ideal trip in that race and no dozing had to come from a little bit farther out of it, a wide trip throughout, ultimately all these things lead to an underlaid price. But there's a part of me that thinks 
How underlaid could he possibly be with the presence of McCracken? I feel like McCracken is going to be in here and he's going to take his fair share of money. You know Pletcher's going to take money. I don't particularly like fact-finding. If I had to take one of the two Pletchers, I actually prefer Taprit, although he is a little bit slow on paper. I like no dozing at 3-1. to one. I think I might get 3-1, to one, and I think he may be a, a pretty solid play for me tomorrow afternoon in the Sam F. Davis down at Tampa Bay Downs. The last graded stakes race that we're going to talk about from our friends at Tampa Bay Downs. It's the Endeavor. It is the third of four legs of the late pick four. Again, we'll have that video up later on this afternoon, video.drf.com. Let's take a look at the field for the Endeavor, if we could. This is an interesting race, I think, for a number of reasons. And as you see, again, if you're watching, I'll, I'll articulate this as well as I can. The two Elysia's World and the three No Fault of Mine, I have written in likely to scratch because that's what their connections have said at this stage in the game. And because of that, I have not incorporated them into my 100-point value line. So this value line is essentially banking on the two of them scratching. If for some reason one of the two enters, I'm going to have to go through and change those numbers. But right in order, Light in Paris, 6-1. to one. Cactus Copy, 9-9-1. to nine to one. Isabella Singh, 7-5. to five. Evidently, 13-1. to one. Joe DeSanamo, 10-1. to one. Azalea, 13-1. to one. As we turn the page, you see lots of Lex, 6-1. to one. Emerald Pond, 49 to 1 and Frosty Friday 16 to 1. I think the most likely winner in this race is the most likely winner and, and by a pretty, pretty wide margin, by a pretty substantial margin. That's Isabella Sings. We're going to take a look right now at the Marshawas River. This is her most recent start. This is at Gulfstream Park and she's out there doing her thing. She's winging it. You see the fractions 23, 46 and 1, 9 and 4 for three quarters. And she doesn't pack it in. She continues on. She tries Sandiva, her stable mate for Pletcher. Got the jump, as far as the other horses are concerned. She came over the top, got the job done. But you see the fractions, 33-2. and two. What else could you ask for? Isabella Sings is facing a less talented field in the endeavor. We saw her almost pull off a giant upset of Teppen last year with similar tactics. Blow this thing open, go for home early. She gets back to Johnny Velasquez. I think there's a lot to like here other than the price. I think 7-5 to five is fair. I believe she's much higher on the morning line. I can't imagine her. I believe it's 5-2 to two on the line. I can't imagine her being 5-2. to two. I think she goes off close to even money. I think she speed pops this field. I'm going to be very, very surprised if she doesn't get the job done. I think she is the most likely winner of the endeavor. A live long shot, though, if you're looking for one of those. I think Joe DeSanta Mo is an interesting runner. I love the way that she finished in her most recent start. That was down at Gulfstream. I know she's coming off of a bit of a layoff, but now she goes out with Ralph Nix. This is a really, really interesting filly that it seems like slowly but surely she's putting it all together. I don't think she can win. I made her 10 to 1 on the line. She is my, I believe, fourth choice as far as value is concerned. But she's the one that I want to try to hook up underneath with Isabella Sings. If I'm playing some sort of a straight exacta, it would be Isabella Sings over Joe DeSanta Mo. It'll be interesting to see ultimately what price she goes off at. But I think she's an interesting live long shot in a race that I think will be dominated, dominated by Isabella Sings. Maybe not by the final margin, but that could be one of those races where she hangs on and wins by three quarters of a length of her length, or a diminishing gap anyway, when really she had this thing in control the entire way. I think Isabella Sings is going to be very, very tough to beat in the endeavor. Three graded stakes races all at Tampa Bay Downs, our friends, tomorrow afternoon. Big day of racing, obviously. And speaking of big day of racing, DRF Live starting at 3 o'clock Eastern tomorrow afternoon, live.drf.com. Let's take a look at that slate, if we could. You're going to have Dan Elman and Mike Beer kick things off. I believe the way the schedule is set up will have a bit of overlap. I, I want to say probably the Gulfstream Park Turf Handicap and the Sam F. Davis. You may get myself along with those two boys. Then Mike will retire for the day, and then we'll come in, and it'll just be me and Illman bringing you through all the way to the Martha Washington at Oaklawn Park. It'll be a fun day of racing, a condensed day. We're not going to be going marathon distance as far as time is concerned. A lot in a short amount of time, but a lot of quality, and I think highlighted by Tampa Bay Downs tomorrow afternoon. I'm not just saying that because they are the presenting sponsor of this show. One last thing on, a, on sort of a, a recapping note, and I'm not going to be that guy, but I do need to just throw it out there. I believe last week I said if the Patriots score 28 points, they're going to win the Super Bowl. I don't, by no stretch of the imagination, I think that's the way that it would happen. But it worked. Patriots win. All is right with the world. One for the thumb. The formulator race of the day for Friday is the first at Santa Anita. We're going to cue that up momentarily. I think any of you at home are well aware, if you play Santa Anita, uh, the weather has not been kind to our friends in Southern California and Arcadia. Uh, this race is supposed to go down the hill. 
We'll find out if it does. If the rain comes, then it probably won't. If the rain doesn't come, then it may go down the hill. We'll find out. That is the formula to race the day for Friday. We'll show that momentarily. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you again to our friends at Tampa Bay Downs for sponsoring this show. If you've watched live, whether it's live.drf.com, live stream, Twitter, or Facebook, good on you. Thank you for doing so. If you catch this thing podcast version, you have YouTube, you have SoundCloud, you have iTunes, you've got video.drf.com for you to digest all of this stuff. If you want to follow along with me on Twitter, at Bernie or underscore Matt, questions, comments, concerns, or if you just want to riff about whatever it may be, fire away. 12.30 on the East Coast, 9.30 on the West Coast. Without further ado, the formulator race of the day for Friday. Santa Anita's first. Best of luck this weekend. We'll talk again next Friday here on the Matt Bernier Show.